Hello everyone. My name is Ashwarya Jain. So today I'll be discussing about the NPS withdrawal policy. So there has been some changes within this policy, which I'll be discussing in this session. So before starting with the session, I would like to inform you that we are the only dedicated platform for the banking lateral entry and specialist officer exam. So do subscribe to our channel and plus join our Telegram group, for which the link is given in the description box. So yeah, NPS. When we talk about national pension system, it the word itself says pension. So it is a retirement planning scheme. The national pension system is a pension come investment scheme which is launched by the government of India to provide old age security to the citizens of India. In 2004, the scheme was only available to the government employees, but while in 2009, it was open to everyone. Now, everyone can invest into this scheme for their retirement planning. It brings an attractive long-term long -term saving avenue to effectively plan your retirement to safe and regulated market-based return. So here, the returns are based on the market, like the uh, stock market. So your whatever savings or whatever the investment you are making into this scheme are invested into either equity shares or into corporate bonds or government securities. So opening of individual pension account under NPS, only tier one, tier one and tier two. So you have two options while opening an account under NPS, either you open only tier one account or you open both tier one and tier two account. So there are two options available to an individual by all Indian citizens, including the NRIs between the age group of 18 to 70 years. So anyone between 18 to 70 years of age can open this NPS account. Either he can open a tier one account or he or she can open tier one and tier two both account. Tier one account has to be compulsorily open while tier two account is voluntarily in nature. Second, when we talk about the regulatory body of this NPS, the PFRDA, the Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority, it regulates all the framework with regard to NPS, including legalities, investment processes, and latest NPS withdrawal rules. So now, when we talk about the investment choices in the national pension system, the NPS offers you the two approaches to invest in your account. Whenever you will open your account in NPS, you have two choices. First one is the active choice and the other is the auto choice. Active choice is a choice wherein it is more customized. You can, you yourself can uh, like divert your funds according to your own choice, wherein you have four options, which is equity, corporate debt, government securities and alternative investments fund. So you have the choice of how much percentage you want to invest in equity and how much percentage you want to invest in debt and how much percentage you want to invest in government securities. So you have your own choice. When we talk about the auto choice, in auto choice, you have three options, wherein the one is the aggressive mode, then is the moderate auto choice mode, and the third is the conservative auto choice mode. So there are only three options from which you have to choose one option. So if you are a conservative investor, you choose to invest your entire pension wealth in corporate debt or government securities assets class, so in auto choice, in case if you want to keep your fund very much of safe and you want to uh, put your savings money into very conservative mode so that it, the risk is very, very low. So you can invest 100% of your investment amount into corporate debt and government securities. However, if you want to have exposure to equity, you can allocate maximum 75% of your money to asset class equity or up to 5% in alternative investment funds. So alternative investment funds are the highest among all these categories. So the risk is highest among the alternative investment funds. So the maximum you can invest here is only 5% of your contribution. When we talk about equity, the maximum you can contribute to equity is only 75% of your contribution. While in the corporate debt and government securities, the maximum you can contribute here is the 100% of your contribution. Next. When we talk about exiting from this NPS policy. So how do you exit? You exit from this policy once you attain the age of 60 years or sometimes there is a premature exit or on the death of the subscriber. When we talk about the superannuation, which is on attaining the age of 60 years, 
when a subscriber reaches the age of super annuation, which is attaining the age of 60 years, he or she will have to use at least 40% of its accumulated pension corpus to purchase an annuity that would provide a regularly monthly pension. So on reaching the age of 60 years of age, the person has to exit from the policy and he has an option wherein whatever corpus has been generated, मतलब पेंशन लाइक मंथली इन्वेस्टमेंट्स करने के बाद जो कॉर्पस जनरेट हुआ है जो सब्सक्राइबर का कॉर्पस है वो उसपे से 60 परसेंट ही लमसम विड्रॉ कर सकता है 40 परसेंट ही हैज टू चूज मिनिमम 40 परसेंट हैज टू चूज इन दी फॉर्म ऑफ एन्युटी इन दी फॉर्म ऑफ रेगुलर मंथली पेंशन सो एटलीस्ट 40 परसेंट ऑफ दी एक्यूमुलेटेड पेंशन कॉर्पस टू परचेज एन एन्युटी दैट वुड प्रोवाइड अ रेगुलरली मंथली पेंशन द रिमेनिंग फंड्स कैन बी विड्रॉन एज लमसम व्हिच इज द 60 परसेंट सो दैट्स हिज ओन विश minimum 40% has to be for the regularly monthly pension and if the total accumulated pension corpus is less than or equal to 5 lakh then the subscriber can opt for the 100% lump sum withdrawal 100% lump sum withdrawal sirf ek hi case mein ho sakta hai jab uska pension ka corpus hai agar wo 5 lakh ya uske equal hai when we talk about the pre mature exit in case of a pre pre mature exit that means 60 years se pehle he want to exit from this NPS policy. So in that case, 80% has to be in the form of monthly regular pension. So then 80% of the accumulated pension corpus of the subscriber has to be utilized for the purchase of the regular monthly pension and the remaining can be withdrawn as lump sum. So 20% he can withdraw as lump sum and 80% minimum has to be as a regular monthly pension. And you, however, you can exit from NPS only after completion of five years. Five years ke baad hi premature exit kar sakte hain. Jaise na apne NPS apna start ke account, uske after five years you can make a premature exit not before that. And if the total corpus is less than or equal to two point five lakh, subscriber can opt for hundred percent lump sum withdrawal. Jab hum premature exit ke baat karte hain, agar subscriber ke jo corpus hai, wo two point five lakh ya usse उससे कम है तो हम 100 परसेंट लमसम विद्रॉ कर सकते हैं दैट केस एन्यूटी इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड एंड अपॉन दी डेथ ऑफ दी सब्सक्राइबर द एंटायर एक्यूमुलेटेड पेंशन कॉर्पस वुड बी पेड टू द नॉमिनी और द लीगल हायर ऑफ दी सब्सक्राइबर तो जो भी एक्यूमुलेटेड एंटायर पेंशन कॉर्पस होता है वो नॉमिनी लीगल हायर के पास चला जाता है सब्सक्राइबर की डेथ पर सो दीज आर द थ्री केसेस जब एन से एग्जिट हो जाते हैं नेक्स्ट when we talk about the partial withdrawal subscriber in nba subscriber should be in nps for at least 3 years partial withdrawal means you are actually in that policy but aapne partially kuch withdraw kar liya usme se amount suppose in case of an emergency you are in need of fund to aap partial withdrawal kar sakte ho apne nps account se par minimum 3 years complete ho jane chahiye account ko second to withdrawal amount hoti hai it cannot exceed 25% of the contribution made by the subscriber. So the subscriber ne jo self-made contribution hai, that withdrawal cannot exceed 25% of what has, what contribution has been made by the subscriber. Withdrawal can happen maximum of three times during the entire tenure of subscription. So tenure of subscription hota hai, that is till 60 years of age, though subscription ka tenure hota hai, usme sirf teen baar hi withdraw kiya ja sakta hai. Withdraw is allowed only against the specified reasons, for example, higher education of children, marriage of children, for the purchase or construction of residential house, or for the treatment of critical illness. So there are specific reasons which are mentioned in the site as well. You can visit the site which is npstrust.org.in, wherein you will find all the reasons in which you can do a partial withdrawal. Only 25% can be withdrawal. And three times during the entire tenure of the subscription can be withdrawn. Exit from exit from the policy at the age of 60. The subscriber can decide to remain invested in NPS up to 75 years. So uh, what happens is at the age of 60, the subscriber doesn't want to like get the annuity. Now, subscriber ko annuity leni hai, subscriber ko invested rehna hai NPS mein. Agar usko NPS mein invested rehna hai, to wo uske paas option hai. First is, wo apne NPS account ko continue kar sakta hai beyond the age of 60. 
the subscriber can continue to contribute to NPS account beyond the age of 60 years or up to 75 years. 75 years tak wo contribute kar sakta. The contribution beyond 60 is also eligible for exclusive tax benefit under the NPS. Both at the age of 60, you don't want to withdraw your money. And you want to after 75, you have pension milli start. So, you can contribute to 75. That is an option available to the subscriber. Deferment, annuity as well as lump sum amount. What happens is, subscriber doesn't have payment, but he wants to get his pension after 75 years. Ke baad mile. The subscriber can defer withdrawal and stay invested into NPS up to 75 years of age. Wo 60 ke baad agar chahte, ko pension nahi lena, ko lump sum nahi lena, but I want to be invested or 75 years ke baad hi I want to get pension or my lump sum amount. Agar if he has sufficient money for his household, household expenses and everything, so he can remain invested into that NPS scheme up to 75 years of age and earn the required rate of return on a compounding rate. So, the compounding rate per enjoy kar sakte apne ROI jo bhi usko NPS se mil raha hai, NPS account se, and he can remain invested till the age of 75 years of age. Subscriber can defer only lump sum withdrawal, defer only annuity, or defer both lump sum as well as annuity. So, defer hai, depend on the subscriber ke upar, ya to apni annuity defer kar sakta hai, lump sum nikal sakta hai, annuity le sakta hai, lump sum defer kar sakta hai, ya fir dono ko defer kar sakta hai, ki main 75 years ke baad hi lena chahunga. Start your pension. If the subscriber do not wish to continue or defer the NPS account, he or she can exit from NPS. He or she can initiate exit request online as per the NPS exit guidelines to start receiving pension. So he has all the three options. Ya to continue contribution apna continue rakhe NPS account mein, ya wo defer kar de, ya fir wo tabhi exit kar de at the age of 60. So yeah. Annuity schemes. When we talk about the annuity schemes under NPS, there are four types of schemes. So annuity for life. So NPS maybe there are four schemes from which you have to choose one. First is annuity for life. On the death of annuitant, payment of annuity ceases. Self annuity, which monthly pension is, that is until the death of annuitant is alive, subscriber is alive, and after that, it is closed. Annuity for life with return of purchase price on death. So, on the death of annuitant, payment of annuity ceases and the purchase price is returned to the nominee. So, jitna bhi purchase price is the amount which the subscriber has made towards that policy. So, jo bhi amount subscriber ne payment kari hai us NPS account mein, to bhi purchase price tha, uska total jo lamsam amount hai, wo nominee ko mil jata hai, annuitant ki death ke baad. So, in this case, Annuitant ko pension to milti milti hai, uski death ke baad, jo lump sum amount jo purchase price hota hai, wo usko nominee ko de diya jata hai, jo bhi subscriber pay karta hai during its tenure. Annuity payable for life with 100% annuity payable to spouse on the death of annuitant. In this case, annuity jo monthly pension hai, wo annuitant ko to milti hai, that is subscriber ko to milti hai, aur uski death ke baad, annuitant ki death ke baad, jo uska spouse hai, Usko bhi lifetime 100% annuity milti hai. On the death of annuitant, annuity is paid to the spouse during lifetime. If the spouse predeceases the annuitant, payment of annuity will cease after the death of the annuitant. So, suppose agar uh, there is person Mr. X, uske paas monthly pension aari hai. In case he dies, to uski wife ko, which is, uh, which is suppose Mrs. Uh, Mrs. X, Mrs. X, to usko an monthly pension milti rahegi jab tak uski death nahi hongi. Fourth option is, fourth option is a mix of all these options. One, two, three ke sare benefits ko mila ke fourth bana hai. Fourth scheme is, where is annuity is payable for life with 100% annuity payable to spouse on the death of the annuitant with return on purchase of annuity on the death of annuitant. Annuity is paid to the spouse during lifetime and the purchase price is returned to the nominee after the death of the spouse. So, in this case, the Mr. X has a monthly pension for his death. After his death, the spouse has a monthly pension for his monthly pension for his lifetime. And in case the spouse dies, the nominee has the whole purchase price for his purchase price. The lump sum purchase price for his nominee has the legal hire. So, it is a mixture of the benefits of all the three above schemes. 
सो इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन यू कि आपको कौन सी लेनी है दे आर मेनी पेंशन प्रोवाइडर्स लाइक एच डी एफ सी पेंशन प्लान एंड एस बी आई पेंशन प्लान एल आई सी सो और यू कैन ऑल्सो ओपन यूर एन पी एस अकाउंट बाई विजिटिंग दी एन पी एस ट्रस्ट डॉट ओ आर जी डॉट एन साइट सो मी टॉक अबाउट दी एन सी क्यूज ऑफ दी एन पी एस विद्रॉल पॉलिसी द फर्स्ट वन इज न्यू एंट्री एज अंडर द एन पी एस स्कीम इज सो बिफोर इट वॉज एटीन टू सिक्सटी फाइव ईयर्स वाई द एंट्री एज अंडर द एन पी एस स्कीम हैज बी इंक्रीज फ्रॉम सिक्सटी फाइव ईयर्स टू सेवेंटी ईयर्स सो द करेक्ट आंसर हेयर इज बी एटीन टू सेवेंटी ईयर्स If you calculate the benefits which you get after opening an account into NPS, are really amazing. I think everyone should have this NPS retirement planning account. New subscriber, wait, I'm just unable to um wait. I think my audio, yeah. New subscriber who joins NPS after the age of sixty five have minimum lock in period of. So the new person who joins NPS after the age of sixty five. उनका मिनिमम लॉक इन पीरियड इज द करेक्ट आंसर इज ए थ्री इयर्स सिक्सटी फाइव ईयर्स के बाद ज्वाइन करते हैं एनपीएस थ्री इयर्स इज द मिनिमम लॉक इन पीरियड नेक्स्ट ऑप्शन टू चेंज द इन्वेस्टमेंट चॉइस एसेट एलोकेशन चेंजिंग बिटवीन द ऑटो चॉइस एंड द एक्टिव चॉइस और टू चेंज द रेशो ऑफ एलोकेशन अमंग द एसेट क्लासेस अंडर द एक्टिव चॉइस सो सपोज आपने ऑटो चॉइस ले ली है Uh, आपने कंजर्वेटिव या एग्रेसिव कोई भी मोड ले लिया है आपको उनके बीच में चेंजेस करने हैं आपको एक्टिव से ऑटो चॉइस पर आना है आपको और कस्टमाइज कराना है या आपको एक्टिव चॉइस से ऑटो चॉइस पर शिफ्ट होना है तो आप कर सकते हैं आपने एसेट क्लासेस को कि आपको कंट्रीब्यूशन में अपना ज्यादा कॉपरेट बॉन्ड्स में रखना है इक्विटी में कम करना है इक्विटी में बढ़ाना है तो अकॉर्डिंगली यू कैन मेक दी चेंजेस द मैक्सिम नंबर ऑफ टाइम विच यू कैन मेक दीज चेंजेस इज करेक्ट आंसर इज सी टू टाइम्स इन अ फाइनेंशियल ईयर तो आप दो बहारी साल में वो चेंजेस कर सकते हो अपने एसेट एलोकेशन को विद इन द पॉलिसी नेक्स्ट सो इट इज अ मार्केट बेस्ड प्लान एज वेल सब्सक्राइबर कैन ऑप्ट फॉर विदड्रॉ ऑफ लमसम अमाउंट इन अ फेज मैनर ओवर द पीरियड ऑफ सिक्सटी टू सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर्स तो आप विदड्रॉ कर सकते हो लमसम अमाउंट फेज मैनर में कितनी बार हेयर द करेक्ट आंसर इज ए अप टू टेन इंस्टॉलमेंट्स so the subscriber can opt for withdrawal of lump sum amount in a phased manner to so, lump sum amount jo hai phased manner mein nikal sakte ho kitni installments mein up to 10 installments how much is the maximum option to allocate dash percentage of the subscriber's contribution is asset class equity in tier 1 and the dash percentage in asset class equity in tier 2 under active choice जब हम टीयर वन की बात करते हैं तो हम मैक्सिम सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ही इक्विटी में डाल सकते हैं बिकॉज इट इज अट ऑफ रिटायरमेंट प्लानिंग एंड पेंशन प्लान तो टीयर वन की जब हम बात करते हैं तो एक पेंशन प्लान है तो जो भी सब्सक्राइबर है तो उसकी मनी सेफ रहे तो सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट की एक लिमिट लगाई हुई है कि इससे ज्यादा हम इक्विटी में नहीं इन्वेस्ट कर सकते बिकॉज इट इज अ रिस्की इन्वेस्टमेंट मीन वो टॉक अबाउट टीयर टू टीयर टू विच इज एन इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लान उसमें हम 100 परसेंट तक इक्विटी में इन्वेस्ट कर सकते हैं तो टीयर वन अकाउंट जब हम एनपीएस में अकाउंट खोलते हैं टीयर वन अकाउंट इज मैंडेटरी अकाउंट और जब हम टीयर टू अकाउंट की बात करते हैं दैट इज अ वॉलेंटियरली अकाउंट बिकॉज टीयर टू अकाउंट को हम इन्वेस्टमेंट अकाउंट बोलते हैं तो हम इन्वेस्टमेंट अकाउंट जब हम बात करते हैं तो हम इन्वेस्टमेंट अकाउंट इसलिए खुलवाते हैं बिकॉज जिससे कि सारे इन्वेस्टमेंट जो है ना वो एक जगह हो जाए इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मतलब इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मैनेज योर इन्वेस्टमेंट इन वन प्लेस so you don't have to manage different different portfolios aap apne investments tier 2 account mein ek hi jagah par maintain kar sakte hain so it is voluntarily if you want to make your investments you can open in tier 2 account under nps scheme next thank you so much for watching the session i hope you like it